Yo, yo. Hey, what's up, Mason? How's it going? Is it Micah or Mika? Micah. Micah. Cool. Yeah, I've, uh, uh, doing good, man. Thanks for coming on. I Thanks appreciate it. Us. Yeah, my, uh, my last name is your first name, so we're like <laughs> quarter brothers or something. Right. Hell yeah. Both MM. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. We can be uh, superheroes. Right? Hell yeah. Um, can you hear me all good? I can. I don't have headphones. Is that going to be okay for you? Um, headphones are better, but it's okay either way. Okay, cool. Let me see. This microphone. So I'm just going to adjust this microphone real quick, and then we'll be good. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. It's, um, it's funny, um, I first got introduced to your music, I mean, basically right when it came out. So right. I was like 17, I think you were the same age at the time. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I had this high school crush, and we both liked your music, and you know, we'd jam out to it at parties and stuff. Yeah. And then one day, she, she burnt me the CD and brought it to me. And then like three <laughs> three days later, one of my friends was like, dude, I think she's dating another guy. And I was like, what? No. Oh my God. So then I got to be all emo and, and listen to your CD. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So, so that was rad. So that was, that was my, uh, my introduction basically to, to you and your music. Very cool, man. Um, but to get started, um, I'm curious, like what all you've got, uh, going on these days. I saw you did, I think it was last year you did the 10 year anniversary tour for Metro station, which looked yeah. like it was huge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll probably, we'll probably work on another Metro record, um, you know, at some point, but, uh, right now I've just been writing a lot for myself. I've been writing a lot for other artists um, just really diving into the writing process. Uh, I just put out a song with this DJ group, Tom and Collins. Um, and the, the, do you know the band Keen? Yeah. I love that band. Yeah. The singer from Keen sang it. It's called Animal. And the DJ group is called Tom and Collins. And they just put that out on like all, um, streaming platforms and stuff like that. And then I just, I also did a song with, um, uh, Gene Simmons' daughter, Sophie Simmons. She's really rad, really good singer. Um, called Burn Me Down, and that's out everywhere as well. So yeah, just been writing a lot, man. <clears throat> that's awesome, man. Those those yeah. are some great people to collab with. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, other than music, I see you at Politicon recently, and yeah, and kind of exploring different avenues. What kind of got you into going to events like that and getting involved in in politics and all that? I don't know, you know. I don't know. I just got really interested in, in it. Um, I like being aware of what's going on. You know, I like to know what's going on. Um, I, uh, I like hearing both sides. Um, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, it's kind of weird because, you know, I think everyone just, they didn't think Trump was going to win, you know, or, or that's what the news said. And, um, I grew up in Texas. I grew up in Dallas, Texas. And, um, I don't know. I was raised around a lot of Republicans, honestly. And, you know, I knew a lot of people that weren't voting for Hillary Clinton. So I don't know. I just, you know, I, I just, uh, I kind of want to know what's going on. And, um, you know, I'm good buddies with a couple of the kids from like, uh, Parkland, um, Cameron Kasky and Kyle Kashev. And, um, you know, I love those guys a lot and, you know, I just want to, want to know what, what the hell's going on, you know? Yeah. I think that's part of just being a good citizen is, absolutely being aware totally and you know and not just you know just listen to what uh, what everyone else is saying or what you know i just remember that that um that poll from the new york times where it was like donald trump was like eight percent you know that he was gonna win and i was just like this is just crazy i mean i don't know who these people were talking to but i don't know man <clears throat> i don't know yeah yeah it's it's i feel like they knew it was closer than it was and they were saying it was kind of weird. I mean, the whole thing. I mean, I think there's still like this, you know, for a lot of people, probably, you know, and I, I definitely feel bad for them. But like, there's this like, you know, it, they're still in a state of shock, maybe, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. It's it's interesting in in uh, the culture of social media and everything. And we can mm -hmm. probably go way back with that, because I know you started basically with music on MySpace. That's and then right. se seeing the evolution of social media now to this constantly connected thing where people have so many different perspectives right? and it's so influenced by who you follow on social media and you know, what political things you're taking and what social things, what entertainment and what, what have you seen as, I don't know, sort of the biggest evolution there, you know, going from 
just playing music and then you see all these things out there? Well, bringing up MySpace, I mean, I just remember watching, you know, uh, I guess that was in a way the kind of the first death, you know, MySpace kind of dying, um, you know, and uh, I forget how all that happened. I mean, I guess I, rem I remember Fox bought it, I think. And then all of a sudden, to, to a certain extent, it started dying. So I'm not sure. I know there's like this nostalgia for MySpace, but um, I don't know, man. It's really weird. It, uh, Especially how I, I feel like, especially, you know, in the entertainment industry and especially out here in L.A., I mean, people are, are pushed to one side, you know. Um, I wasn't raised like that. I was raised to listen to, to all ideas and listen to everybody and, you know, um, not having like this, you know, to get all Kanye or whatever, that monolith, <laughs> you, know, I, you know. I think that's silly, to be honest. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't make sense to me to, to limit yourself. Even if you come back and feel like you have the same views, at least you've strengthened them against an opposition or Absolutely. differing opinion. Hundred percent. And like right now, it's um, you know, especially with Twitter and stuff. I think you know we're we're seeing a lot of people being banned um, and censored, and um, to me, that I find that very scary. So, yeah, same. Especially when you look into why some of them are banned. Sure. It seems, or even like Roseanne getting kicked off her show. Absolutely. It's like you see things. I grew on, up on the show, you know. Yeah, she's she's amazing. And, and you see, I think they were looking for an opportunity and they saw it and took her out, which is too bad. Yeah, I think they're regretting it now, you know. Yeah, definitely. So what's it like coming from Texas, which might as well be its own country almost. I mean, it's such a different Absolutely. different type of place. And 100%. then and then ending up in in L.A., uh, I mean, that's, that's where, I mean, my brothers did acting. I mean, I, I, I've been playing music since I was a little kid, uh, started playing in the church, uh, where I grew up like a big giant mega church, uh, with like, you know, a youth center for like, with like a skate park and stuff. And I would play, um, in the worship band there. That's how I pretty much learned how to play music was doing that stuff. Uh, you know, playing church camps and stuff during the summers and stuff like that. And, and then my brother, my little brother's got into acting, and uh, we would come out to L.A. for a thing called pilot season. It's when the network start pitching a bunch of you know um, show ideas and stuff like that, and then <clears throat> see if they actually stick and stay around. And then for me, I, you know, I got I got lucky. I uh, met a couple band members, uh, a couple great musicians, and started a band. And um, really, I mean, the first thing we did was. The MySpace thing, we started promoting a lot on MySpace, putting up our uh, music on there and playing house parties, you know, um, around L.A. And then uh, we were on the unsigned artist charts. That's what that's what got a lot of those, you know, labels. I mean, you know, they don't have to go to shows anymore. Really, you can just sit on sit online and find bands. You know, you don't have to actually go out and <clears throat> to shows, really. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's that is odd because. Yeah, your music kind of came out right during that transition. Yes. Where social media, especially MySpace with music, was just huge. I mean, so many people broke off of there where it was like, well, I can't believe this band is out there. You know, we. Right. No record label, no nothing, but they're awesome. They've got a great sound and it's easy to connect. And it was a combination of everything. It was, it was a Twitter, a, a Facebook, a SoundCloud. You know, it had it all, you know, and then all the, and then it broke apart into all the, it's very weird. I find it very odd. Yeah. Yeah, I never had a MySpace. I It had it all, man. Yeah. It had it all, you know. I was on there looking like listening to music and stuff, but I yeah, I never actually designed it or anything. But yeah. I've heard stories about Tom and like he just he sold it, made a bunch of money and like just traveling the world, but uh it's funny, pe there's people all the time like on Twitter they're like we miss Tom, we miss we miss MySpace. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm always seeing always seeing the memes of uh, like yeah. you know free speech was fine on MySpace. You know we got to bring yes. it back, and all the best bands came from MySpace. Like it was great, man. It was a really great time. Um, yeah, I just find it super weird. Like like what I was saying, like it kind of broke up into different parts. You know, now there's like you know SoundCloud and Twitter. It's like MySpace had all that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, getting back to the the music a little bit. 
so you started off, you said, playing playing house parties and just kind of, I mean, that's kind of yeah. like the old school kind of punk rock approach where it's like, you know, you find a place to play. It doesn't have to be some amazing big venue. You just got to find people, good atmosphere and, and play your music and see if it connects. Well, there was like this underground dance scene around here um, back in, you know, 06. Uh, I mean, even when I was 16 is kind of when we were starting. So 05, 06. And there was like this underground dance scene around um, around L.A., around Hollywood. We would play dance parties. Um, and we promoted a lot on MySpace. And like, you know, different kids would um, – throw parties and ask us to play. And it was, it was a great time. It really was. But that's kind of, I mean, if you look back at old interviews of, of me and the band, I mean, we're always talking about like, we want to play electronic dance music, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, it's very interesting. Very weird. Yeah. You guys always have like great synth lines and and beats and everything. I feel, I feel like that's a big part of why people liked your stuff because there was all that pop punk out there. Yes. And you know, you guys definitely have some of those elements, but you brought in like the actual dance, like party feel, where it's like right. you, you could turn that on in a party and you really, really could feel it. Yeah. I mean, you know, stuff like, uh, I mean, back then, you know, Control was kind of like one of the songs we would play at parties and people love that, you know, and then, <clears throat> and then, you know, even, I don't even think the label really thought, you know, Shake It was a big song until it actually like popped off, you know? Yeah. Uh, but Control was like our, are kind of like underground hit. Like they love that <clears throat> at the parties and stuff like that. That's that in California. I'd say. Oh yeah. That's, that's awesome. It is, it is strange thinking like the songs that hit with the, you know, with people you're around and then, and then one day a song hits and you're like, I didn't think it was going to be that one. Cause I hear bands yeah. talk about that a lot. I always, you know, you never know. Um, you know, I, I try to, you know, write the best, the best songs, but you yeah, you never know what's going to stick, you know? For sure. So, um, what was your sort of earliest influence in music? Like, what what were you kind of jamming out to, even as like a little kid, where you're kind of starting to craft ideas in your head? For me, it was a lot of electronic stuff. So, New Order, Depeche Mode, um, The Killers was a big influence, of course, um, and you know, also stuff like in the pop punk realm, like Blink One Eighty Two. Um, Probably Blink was one of one of my big influences growing up, but I'll, yeah, The Cure, huge fan of Robert Smith. Um, yeah, The Cure and Depeche Mode are probably some of my biggest influences. But then I also love rock and roll. I love like ACDC, um, uh, and I love the Beach Boys. Oh, same you know, dude. I, I like everything. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, I think it's good to have have a bit of diversity in what you listen to. Sure. And then, and then sometimes, you know, sometimes in like these, you know, these scenes or whatever, it's like, you have to just hardcore, you have, you know, just, you know, I don't, I don't like that. You know, everything. I like everything. Come in. Some stuff I don't like, but you know, listen to everything, I guess. Yeah. Give it a chance at least. Mm -hmm. I was going to say coming from Texas, do you, um, you a big country music fan as well? I love country too. I love country as well. Um, I really like, He's kind of funny that Wheeler Walker. Yeah, dude, he is yeah. so funny, man. I like that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and obviously, like Hank Williams Jr. Um, uh, who also I love. I love. I like Midland a lot. Okay, I've, like, heard, I've heard. They're like them. three piece. Um, they have that song "Drinking Problem." Okay. I like but yeah, country music was all around me growing up. Hundred percent. Did um. When you started playing guitar, were you playing like country stuff, or were you already sort of playing the bands you liked, like Depeche Mode and all that? The, well, the first couple things, the first song I ever learned was "Smoke on the Water." Classic. <laughs> oh, yeah. That and and Teen Spirit, and uh, another Nirvana track. Um, I forget. You had to learn a Nirvana track, and you had to learn a little Blink One Eighty Two, and then. You know, all the kids in school, they, they were like, they thought you were God. You know, they thought you were the best thing. So you yeah. had to learn those. <clears throat> but um, not really country music. I guess more kind of in that pop punk realm. Um, and you and you had to learn uh, Back in Black by ACDC. Yeah. That's 
Yeah, that's one of those riffs, man, like growing up, anytime someone would start playing guitar, they're like, I've right. only been playing like this long, but I can already do that riff. Right. I can remember probably that. Sweet Home Alabama is enough. That's, a, you know, in Texas, you have to probably, you got to probably know that one. <clears throat> oh, yeah. No doubt. I saw, um, I saw Leonard Skinner in concert like two months Hell ago. Yeah. They, dude, they still rock. They're amazing. Absolutely, man. It's like huge crowd. Everybody's into it. They, I mean, they sounded so good. It was ridiculous. They're just legendary. Um, I, I I got to see ACDC in in Dublin one time, and that and it was their uh, Black Ice tour, I mm -hmm. guess. Man, just one of the most one of the best shows I've ever seen. Just really cool. So I love I love that kind. Of, I love like rock and roll too. So yeah, it's a a great energy with those bands, and and they've like mastered their craft. Yeah. And just good guitar licks, like you're saying, you know, um, that's definitely one of the things that got me into playing guitar. I mean, you hear something like that, uh, you know, I think, I think nowadays a lot of people, you know, especially with like EDM music and stuff, I guess kids hear it and then they want to produce. But when I was growing up, it's like you hear a lick and you, you're like, I need to learn how to play guitar so I can do that, you know? Yeah, it's definitely something that's changed. Now it mm -hmm. seems like a lot of people, yeah, they really are starting with simple beats on their computer or Fruity Loops right. or something and right. and then working from there. Which is funny because yeah. I started playing guitar, like everybody of course, and mm -hmm. then the last little bit I started messing with beats and stuff a little bit. And then I wasn't really getting anywhere so I just recorded some guitar into the computer and I'm like, okay, th this is where I have to start. Like you can't, yeah. can't try to be something you're not creatively. I think you're starting to see more guitars come back. Um, I think it's kind of cyclical. I mean, you know, there was kind of a DJ, there was the DJ thing. And I remember in the, you know, early nineties, uh, and then all, you know, in the eighties, they were scratching and stuff. And I think it goes in cycles. I think it's kind of cyclical. Um, we'll see. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I like hearing like the Justin Bieber tracks with, with guitar. Sure. Stuff. I feel like that's, that's really cool. Sure. Like, like someone with a polished pop voice and then you just do a really simple arrangement. I feel like that's as powerful as anything. Yeah, I think, and people, um, you know, as, as, as everything has gotten so electronic, I think people, like you're saying, really enjoy stripped down stuff, you know? Yeah, no doubt. So, um, I'm curious, um, I saw you, I don't know if it was a Turning Point USA event, but with uh, Can Candace Owens, and I talked to uh, one of her friends, Will Witt from PragerU, a while back. I, I, I met Will Witt at Politicon. He was very nice. Yeah, that guy's that guy's cool. I'm hoping uh, hoping to meet him at some point, but uh, it was cool at least getting to talk to him. Um, but how is it how is it meeting Candace Owens? I know she's kind of the the lady of the moment right now, making headlines all the time with Kanye and all that. Honestly, she was a sweetheart to me. You know, she was super nice, super down to earth, very kind. Um, super intelligent. I mean, you know, can't say enough about it. I mean, to me, she was awesome, you know, super down to earth person. Um, you know, and I, and I was in my hometown, um, and it was just great. It, it was for, uh, the Dallas one was for the women's summit, I believe. Okay. Um, young, and then the one that was in DC was the high school. Um, but yeah, Turning Point has been very nice, you know, um, invite me out and, um, just really good people, man. Honestly, you know, just really down to earth, good people. <clears throat> That's awesome. So what, what are you doing with them? Do you, are you giving speeches or kind of more meet and greets or? No, I mean, there's, there's definitely, um. A couple fans when I go, but you know I'm not speaking or anything. I just I'm there to just listen, and that's that's it. You know, um, like I said, I like hearing both sides. I like hearing everyone's voice, everyone's opinion. I think that's really important. Um, so yeah, um, you know, not speaking or anything, but it's it's I, like like I'm saying, I think it's important to hear both sides, and you know, not just like toss people aside be like we're not going to listen to anything they have to say i think that's really wrong you know yeah yeah definitely i think it's like i was saying before to be a good citizen you gotta know really know what's going on which in this day and absolutely. age is tough to do absolutely man um it's just crazy it's really crazy you know it's a weird time yeah <laughs> it is 
it feels like it's always a weird time and then something happens and it gets even weirder. Exactly. Like, that's just, I think that's life. I think as we get older too, we get a little more aware of what's going on. Yeah. Um, like even on the news, I mean, there's, everyone's freaking out because Trump called himself a nationalist. And um, I, where I grew up, when I was growing up, you know, growing up in Texas, I don't know, it was, that was never a, a dirty word. You know, where I, where I'm from, you know, everyone was really proud to be American and, you know, love the USA. And, you know, um, even, even growing up like history class, I mean, it was all, you know, all history classes were about, you know, whose asses did we kick? (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's true. That was a lot of it. I don't know. You know, but I can, I can see how some people can have a problem with it, but where I grew up, it was never, you know. I just wasn't raised like that. You know, I was, I don't know, it was never a bad word to me. I don't know. Yeah, I think that plays into what you're saying about hearing hearing a lot of different perspectives. Because you can make assumptions that when someone that maybe you don't agree with, they say something, you make an assumption what that means without really gleaning the actual meaning from their statement. And that can be, Absolutely. That can be dangerous. Absolutely. And now some words you can't say, you know, that's very scary to me, you know. Yeah, I agree. That is... Yeah, it's odd. I see, you know, Antifa and different people uh, protesting speeches, and it's interesting. I saw silencing people. Yeah, yeah, and breaking stuff. And I don't know. I I wonder sometimes if they're really a, or how big of a political movement they are, and how much of it is just individuals that are feeling just left out and very discontent, and they have this sort of aggression and everything building up. It's like I feel like. I don't know. We need to find outlets for people that are more constructive than like this political warfare. Well, and if and if you're if you've ever gotten into an argument with someone to to the point of where you're like, shut up, you know, you know, be quiet. You know, you're wrong. You know, you you know, there's like this element of like, you can't even hear what they have to say. You know, you have you're like just be quiet. You know, si- you know. I don't know. That's very scary to just you know. Tell people to shut up like that. I don't. I don't. I don't like that. You know. Yeah. Grow, growing up, I was always told, like telling someone to shut up is like, just about as rude as you can be. Sure. Because you're saying, I don't care what you have to say. I'm not going to listen. What it, you know, what you're saying has no value. Which. Right. Nobody wants to hear that or feel that. Right. And it's fine. You don't have to listen to people. I mean, but to, to like you're saying, to show up and be like you know, shut it down, you know, silence it, you know, that's very scary to me. I don't think that's, I don't think that's, uh, you know, I think we're very lucky to have the freedoms we do have. And that's not really what I see America being all about. I think that's really wrong. So. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's, it's kind of like when you start giving, if you give away any rights or take a step back, yes. there's a really low chance that you'll ever get get any of that back. It's like you yes. don't, don't wanna don't wanna give things away when you don't have to. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you I don't know if you like, what, like uh watch Jordan Peterson stuff, but you know, he talks about, you know, offending people. It's like, you know, it's easy to talk to one person and not offend them, but you know, the moment you're you're talking to a hundred people or a thousand people, at some point something you know, I think he says something like this, you know, at some point something you say is gonna offend somebody and I don't know this um, this kind of like uh, can't be offensive. Somebody's gonna get offended by you know something. I mean, like it's just gonna happen. Um, or you know, even this like anti-bully thing. I'm totally like anti-bullies and all that stuff. But I'd also say I got bullied a lot growing mm-hmm. up, and it made me stronger. I, you know, I don't want to be like I praise bullies for all, that, but like it, you know, it lit a fire under under me to like you know want to get out there and prove people wrong, you know, I don't know. I think, you know, at some point somebody's going to be mean to you. Sorry. You know, I don't know. Yeah. It's tough. You got to gauge like that. You need, there's that necessary adversity that you need to fuel you. Like you don't want to obviously be damaged for life beyond repair. But, but if we don't have adversity, you know, what, what do we have to overcome? I got bullied a lot, man, growing up, like, but it only made it only made me want to like 
fight harder. So I don't know, you know, I definitely don't like people getting bullied, but you know, uh, this whole, like, no one's ever going to bully anyone ever again. I don't know. I just don't, I don't think somebody's, as I said, somebody at some point is going to be mean to you, you know, just walk outside for like 10 minutes and, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Go to the grocery store or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's true. So, someone's going to be rude to you. Somebody at some point. So, maybe. You know. so how did, how did you sort of, uh, overcome that? Is that sort of what pushed you into, into art and, you know, expressing yourself through music? Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd say so. I mean, um, yeah, just playing, playing music. Um, you know, girls were probably a big part too. I mean, you had to pick up the guitar so you could get girls and stuff like that. That was a major thing, but you know, uh, I don't know. I think, you know, it just, it lit a fire under me. It made me, you know, want to achieve more. I think with anybody, you know, if you, if you go through something like that and people tell you how, you know, you're not, if someone's like, you know, as you're saying, it can get to a bad point if someone's like, you know, you're not worth anything, but you know, if you fight through that and someone's like, you know, just pushing you down, you know, you're not worth anything and you, yeah, at all. And you fight through that and be like, no, you know what? I am worth something and I'm going to prove to you that I am. That's great, man. You know? Yeah. I think that's, a powerful mentality that we should be pushing more for for young people yes in, instead of you know you're a victim more of like okay yeah there are obstacles but you're powerful yeah. enough to overcome them absolutely because yeah, hear... you're gonna you're gonna get pushed down at some point you know it's and like it's kind of it's kind of like that i mean it's so, it's so like dad talk it's like you know it's not about how you fall it's about how you get up you know, it's just, it's so silly, but it's like, but it's true, you know? Yeah, it's true. I think, yeah, getting older, I'm 28 now. I think we're about the same age. But I'm 29. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So you get, get to this age, you start realizing, man, a lot of that stuff that we thought was maybe a little cliche or whatever. It's like, oh no, that's the real stuff. It really is. It really is. And I don't know about you, but as, as I've gotten older, you know, I'm lucky to have like my grandparents uh, still alive. Two on my dad's side and one on my mom's side, but they're just full of knowledge. You know, talk to your grandparents. <laughs> you know, they got they know stuff, man. They know stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, I see we're at like twenty-seven minutes. If you want to hang out longer, that would be dope. Absolutely, man. Sweet, I appreciate it, man. This, this is this is rad. Uh, it's interesting starting starting the podcast and then like the different people I've gotten to connect with. It's like yeah, well that. You've gotten a, uh, a couple of big people. I mean, having Will Witt on, that's really awesome. You know, as I said, he was super, super nice. I also met Fleckus at the uh, Politicon. Oh, nice. Super nice guy as well. Yeah, it's cool. We're talking social media before. Like, there is, there's that opportunity. You can go online and you can troll people. You can be yes. a jerk and you can, you know, yeah. get your kicks out of that. Yeah. Or you can just be like a nice, normal person. And talk to yeah. people and be be cool to them and say, you know, hey, man, like, I like this video you did or I like this song you did. And I feel like, if, I mean, obviously you want to harbor that sort of environment on social media. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm getting to see now firsthand that if you treat people the right way, it's it's a lot better place out there than, than, you can, than you might think. Absolutely. Hearing what somebody has to say and just sitting down with them and just... And also, and also being able to... Uh, yeah, and just maybe maybe think for a minute that you could be wrong about a couple things, you know? Or maybe you have something to learn, you know? That's important always, I guess, to have that mentality that you could always, you know, you could always, someone could always tell you something you don't know, you know? Oh, yeah, that's um, another uh, Peterson saying, what's it? Uh, that's right. Assume the person you're talking to knows something you don't. That's right. Which, that's so important, because we'll forget that. You'll get into a topic and... We'll just be like, yeah, I know about this. And you start rattling sure. off and it's like, yeah, you know, you might know a lot about it. You might know 99% about it, but that 1% yeah. you're missing, that's, that could be the key. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I feel like there's a lot, especially on social media and stuff, there's, you know, a lot of people and it's, and it might just be this, uh, you know, because they're behind the screen, but like, I know, you know, you don't know shit or whatever. And, and there it's this arrogance. Um, it's pretty crazy, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird world. I'm still trying to figure it out. It is. And it's very new. You know, as you were saying with like the MySpace thing, I mean, it hasn't really been that long. 
You know, there was like AOL Messenger, you know, or whatever, yeah. you know, like, this is pretty new. It's pretty new. Yeah, I remember AOL Messenger was like the biggest deal. It's like, wait, if I just get someone's screen name, I can, I can message anybody. Right. So I, I'd get screen names of friends from other friends who didn't know I had it, and I'd go on there and troll them and stuff and right. have a good right. time. But that's, right. that's so old school. But that's, that's what's crazy. It's like, it's not really. You know, it's pretty, <laughs> still pretty fresh. Yeah, you know, that's it's, true. You know, who knows what's going to be next, you know? Yeah. Oh, I, can see, I can see, you know, uh, at a certain point, you know, you know, I'm not saying that Twitter and Facebook and all this stuff is going to go away. But I mean, like I was saying with MySpace, we've seen one die before. Yeah. You know. That's true. Yeah, if Twitter went away, I'd be fine with it. Right. <laughs> I, I kind of like Instagram, but I, I'd be fine too, I guess. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, this is a, kind of a random question, but since you're from Texas, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you follow uh, the UFC at all. But uh, I watch. I love. I love Joe Rogan and stuff. But I'm not. I don't know a lot about it. But I do love. You know, watching UFC. But uh, I know uh, Derek Lewis, who's from Texas, mm -hmm. just got a title shot at heavyweight. I don't know if you saw any. Of, I didn't any of that. Okay, well, he's got great social media. Um, Black Beast UFC, I think, is his handle. But uh, for a Texas guy, he was. He's crazy. He was out during the hurricane and everything in his truck, wow. like saving people and and working just uh yeah like a great guy like down-to-earth guy but has a zany sense of humor but yeah i was hoping maybe you'd, you'd seen him but if uh if you haven't yet yeah, check him out for sure he's he's awesome a lo lot of tough people in texas yeah a lot of good people yeah i've, I've noticed that that it it's uh seems like there's communities that that build up where people like want to help each other and want to like put in the hard work yeah, you know your neighbors, you know, and I'm sure uh, lots of lots of states do, but not so much in L.A. And you know, not so much. You don't really deal with your neighbors all that much here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was in L.A. Uh, for work like four or five months ago. Yeah, and yeah, it's a strange atmosphere there. It is. It's it's a little bit odd. It feels like everybody is kind of foreign to the environment there. Two things I'll say about it. One. I view LA the same way I view Vegas is <clears throat> it's a city built by losers. Um, for each star that's on that boulevard, there's a hundred thousand, maybe more that have failed. Same as Vegas. It was not built by people winning. It was built by people that have lost and tried and failed miserably. Um, and also this, I think it goes with the kind of car culture, but it's very bubble. Everyone's kind of in their bubble, you know? Which is cool. I'm not knocking LA. I love it. But it is, you know, it's a city of, you know, they say it's a city of dreams, it's a city of failed dreams, you know, but that's why it's probably so romantic, I guess, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting to think about that way because most people that show up with a dream, it, it doesn't work out at all. Yes. But, you know, we'd all like to believe somewhere deep down that it's like, oh, yeah, no, I've got the spark. I've, you know, I, I can make it happen. Right. But uh, I was going to say, I think the highlight of L.A. for me was uh, the comedy store. I don't know if you ever hang around there. I don't, but I love stand-up. Big fan. I was just saying, I love like Joe Rogan and stuff. So. Oh, yeah. I gotta. Have you seen his new special? I got to check that out still. I have. See, I loved, when I was growing up, it was like Sam Kennison. Mm. You know, I loved watching Sam Kennison stuff. Um, and Robin Williams. Yeah, I grew up on uh, Robin Williams movies for... As far as stand up, I think uh Dave Chappelle was the one where Oh, absolutely. It hit me like I can't believe he's saying all this and right. it's just hilarious. Right. Yeah. Um so musically, what are what kind of projects are you working on now? I know you you were saying you did a couple songs with people. Are you are you doing like your own album or I mean is Metro Station kind of done at this point? No, we'll probably work on another record probably probably next year, you know. Um and probably do a tour, um, but right now I've just been I've just been like just diving into the writing process, you know, just writing a bunch of songs. Um, you know, maybe after we're we're done here, I'll uh, I'll get your email and I'll send you over a couple. Dude, that'd be awesome. Yeah, one of the last interviews I did, someone um, they like played a song. I think they're gonna play a song of mine before the interview starts or something like that. But mm. I can send you over some stuff if you need, uh, if you want to hear some stuff. Yeah, that'd be awesome. 
Cool. I definitely, definitely blast that out. Awesome. That's Thank you. That's uh, that's great to hear that you guys are gonna do something in the future, at least you know planning on it. Cause yeah, I just uh, um, I was just seeing the other day uh, like kids dancing with the stars or something like that. They were playing Shake It, and I hear it all the time at different things. Um, a good buddy of mine, this rapper Little Aaron, just sampled it for a song called uh, Gucci Belt. Mm -hmm. He just put out. It's actually pretty good. I like it. So have you heard of him, Little Aaron? He's got like the green hair. Yeah, I've I've heard you his music. Check it out. He samples Shake It, and it's the beginning where I go, let's drop. Oh, and nice. And then uh, it's, it's pretty good. I like it. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to check that out. I've heard some yeah. of his music. Uh, he uh, collaborates and tours with uh, Black Bear, who I listen to also. Yeah. So I found out about yeah. him through that. I did a session with Black Bear before. He was really nice. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah. you were writing with him? Yeah. Yep. Is that Where's that song at? I want to hear that. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't got it, but... Um, I write, a, I write with a lot of different people. Um, I've been doing a lot of sessions with, uh, if you know the band, the Mowgli's, some of the, some of the guys from the Mowgli's. Um, uh, this DJ group called Sonder, based out of uh, England. Um, I just, I'm in the studio constantly, you know, just trying to, trying to get the best material, you know, and at some point I'll put, a, put it all out. That's awesome. How many, how many songs do you think you'll write for an album before you like, you know, pare it down to, you know, the best 10 or 12. I mean, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, cause a lot of, a lot of times, you know, I'll just come up with like a little idea and then not think anything of it and then come back to it and, um, build on it. Um, I don't know. I mean, you, you definitely want to, you want to have a lot. Um, and also kind of like, you know, just not so much about partying. I think, you know, there's just, it's all music right now is just about like partying and stuff like that. So I have a couple songs, like there's a song I wrote called The New Normal. And it's just about like, you know, everyone just um, on their phones and uh, uh, just saying like, I'm not normal. What the hell is normal these days? Um, and then I have a song called Save Me From Me, and just kind of more about like interpersonal struggle, you know, kind of just like battling your own demons and stuff like that. And, um, I don't know. We kind of, I, think, I think people need a little bit more than just the party. Not that I don't love that. I like to have a good time like everyone else, but yeah. um, people need a little bit of meaning, maybe, you know? Yeah, I think it's powerful to get it from music, too, because that yeah. kind of seeps into our consciousness in, I think, a different way than any, any other art form. Yeah. Like people really connect to music or musicians and especially when you find like a voice like oh that person like they're speaking the words i couldn't think of yeah. and yeah i think that's that's super important well now i kind of when when i was first doing music you know as i was saying i grew up in the church so i was when i first was playing music you know it was you know you're kind of you're singing to god you know and i mean um that kind of takes music to another level as well and then at the same time you know music kind of originates from that, you know, kind of singing to a higher power, you know, ancient cultures and stuff like that. So, you know, music is that, uh, that connection. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's the best thing in the world. You know, I'm super lucky that I'm, I'm able to do it every day. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so speaking of, of your faith and, you know, kind of coming up in the church, how did that, yeah. how did that sort of influence you? you know, moving to LA, the career, becoming, you know, basically independent at such a young age, do you feel like that helped you? Or, or I guess I don't even know where you're at with faith now, so. Uh, I mean, I still consider myself a Christian. I mean, um, I like listening to everybody. I like hearing everything, um, you know, but yeah, it was uh, part of my culture is being a Christian, you know, that's kind of how I was raised. Um, so I love Christmas. I love, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? But, uh, you know, as I said, you know, I like listening to everybody. I like hearing everything, you know, and I love history. I like, you know, seeing how far back everything goes, you know, different religions, different cultures. Um, that's probably the one subject I did well in, in school was history. I always loved history for whatever reason. Yeah. Probably because it was a lot about like, you know, in Texas, you know, it was all about like Revolutionary War, World War II, uh, 
I always found it fun. I always found it super interesting. Yeah, it is nice to uh, read history of how, yeah, your your ancestors or whatever, like forefathers, like did did great things. They were tough. Sure. They they were brave. And I think that, like we were saying before, that's the attitude I think we need to instill into more people coming up now, is that they they can do these things that are difficult and and courageous. Because I think I think a lot of the problem I've even seen it in my own life is too much comfort. We get too comfortable. Mm. It's like you need you need to make yourself nervous sometimes. Like you know, yes. put, put yourself in a situation where like this is difficult. I'm not sure how much I want to do this, and then you get through it. And it's like, oh, well, I definitely did want to do that. That was that was powerful. And kind of what you were saying that 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 victim mentality. I think you were saying that before. It's that if you're telling someone over and over again how you know weak and pathetic they are, you know, I guess that you know, there's nothing you can do. You know what I mean? That. How is that going to help anybody? How is that going to make anybody stronger? Or any, you know, I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, there's, there's always something you can do, however small it might yes. be, but there's yes. always something. People need hope, you know. I think you know people need a little bit of hope, man. You know. Yeah, that's for sure. I see. Um, what was it? Was it a? Uh, was that song? I was trying to think of the name of one of your songs. Uh, Kelsey, 17 Forever, Shake It, Control, uh, Tell Me What to Do, Wish We Were Older. Oh, Wish We Were Older. Oh, dude, that was, <laughs> there we go. That was, that was a great one. Um, Thanks, man. That was cool. How, how is it, I mean, the writing process with, uh, with you and Trace, were you writing most of those lyrics? Or, or was he, I mean, like the stuff you sang, did you write most of that? Like, Wish We Were Older, I wrote. Um, you know, and a lot of times Trace, you know, I'd, I'd write a bunch of stuff, Trace would write some stuff, and, you know, he'd usually do the verses, I'd usually sing the choruses, except when it came to, like, True To Me, um, I sing that one, and then Kelsey, I sing the whole way. Um, but yeah, we kind of, like, traded off uh, different parts, and, some stuff I'd, I'd already have written, and then some stuff I'd bring to him, and you know, then he would throw his you know input on. So, um, and then some stuff he would have as well, you know. That's cool. So, for the rest of the band, were were you guys the only two members that kind of were there the whole time, or were there others that stayed the whole time too, or did it kind of switch up? Yeah, we were pretty much there the whole time. We did we did have kind of a little break. Um, where I took over Metro Station and uh, I released a uh, EP called The Middle of the Night, which I did completely myself. Okay, then, yeah, I saw that one, yeah. Yeah, I did that. And then me and Trace got back together a little bit ago, uh, a couple years ago now. And um, we put out two EPs and a record, you know, and like I was saying, at some point we'll we'll work on another one as well. That's awesome, man. That that'll be cool. Yeah, to... still, and you know, he's he's a good guy. You know, we're still buddies, and you know, we're we were texting the other day. So, how did uh, how did you guys meet? Like, what? Well, kind of brought that together. We 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 met uh, because my little brother was on uh, Hannah Montana. My little brother Mitchell played the character Oliver Oak on Hannah Montana, and my mom one day was like, "Hey, you should meet uh, you should meet Miley's older brother." And I was like. I don't want to go to the fucking Disney set. I don't want to mm -hmm. fucking, you know, mom, why are you trying to set up a dude date? Yeah. You know? <laughs> but we eventually met up and then, uh, we both kind of hit it off. We both started hanging out and, um, playing the house parties. You know, that's kind of how it started by us hanging out and being like, yo, there's a party. We should play it. And I was like, okay, well, let's make some music. <laughs> you know, we need, we're going to need some songs. Yeah. But we both uh, loved music, and um, yeah, it was kind of our moms that got us together. That's 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 so rad. That's I know through the mouse, bro. Through the mouse. The mouse. Mickey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's yeah, that's so funny. Oh, I saw. Um, were you on Arrested Development? Were you in that one scene? Yeah. When you were little, dude. That's so funny. I saw that the other day, and I was like, no way, because that's one of my favorite shows. Yeah. And I didn't recognize you the first time I watched it through, and I saw it again. I was like, I think I know who that is. Like that, yeah, when awesome. I was young, I tried to do the whole acting thing, but my little brothers were way better at it than me. So, How did, um, 
how did you get on Arrested Development? You just audition and I, get the part? I, yeah, I auditioned for it. Yeah. And it was just that one line, somebody get her a cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I made some decent money off of doing just that one line too. You know, when I was when I was really little. I mean, I must have been like 11, 12, maybe, something like that. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be in one show, though, <laughs> you might as well be in, in the best show. That's the one. Hell yeah. Yeah. Did, uh, did you do anything after that? Or, or once you started music, did you kind of move away from acting? I did a couple print things when I was really little for like JC Penney's and stuff like that. Um, my parents kind of got us in the whole acting thing at a super young age. Uh, kind of starting off in Texas, like I remember one of my little brother, Mitchell's, one of his first things was he did like a Borden's milk commercial in Texas. So like it kind of started up there and then coming out to LA, he, um, I guess one of his big first things, you know the movie Monster House? Yeah. He play, he's the main character and they put like all the CGI dots on him and stuff like that when he was really little. Oh, wow. Uh, so that was one of the first things he did. Um, uh, but for me, I did, I don't even know if the sh that the channel's around anymore, but the Noggin channel, I did like a commercial for the Noggin channel when I was super little, but mm -hmm. I don't even know if it's still around. So I did little things, but music was always kind of my, my favorite thing, my passion. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you have a, do you have a big family? There... I have a big Italian fan. I mean, like on my dad's side, they're all Italian. So like I have a ton of cousins, but, uh, my immediate family, just, um, two younger brothers and I'm the oldest. Oh, nice. Yeah. So um, I guess we hit like forty six minutes. We can probably wrap it up if that's if that's cool. cool. If you have any anything, if you have anything you want to shout out or promote, that'll be no, that'll just be like, dope. You know, just you know, you know, thank you so much for having me, and uh, you know, a pleasure talking with you. And I hope we speak again soon, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for coming on. It would it would be awesome to do another episode. It was. Uh, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's fun to talk about all these sort of different things and get get a different perspective on stuff. Yeah, man, you're a good interviewer too. So thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll send you uh, my email after this, and uh, it'd be cool to hear some of those songs. Yeah, I'll send you that, and um, you know anything else you need. If you need like a picture or something to go with it, or uh, I'm not sure, but whatever you want. <laughs> That'll be dope. Awesome. Cool, man. Good talking to you. Good talking to you. All right, peace. Later.